Jose Hercules, good to see you both. Our old friend Juan Carlos Osorio is back in the headlines. He may be managing Atletico Nacional now, but he is still talking about what I think is the high point of his managerial career, managing Mexico. Yes, two years after he left the job. Here's what he's saying, not very flattering. And he said it not to ESPN in Mexico, not to ESPN in the United States, to ESPN in Brazil. Of course, remember Mexico, Brazil played in the round of 16 at the last World Cup. Osorio says, quote, when Mexico played Brazil, I knew that all the Brazilian players were playing in the best leagues in the world. But I didn't speak with our team about that. Even with the very good group of players we had, Carlos Vela, Hector Herrera, Irving Lozano, we needed other players like Brazil had up front. William, Coutinho, Neymar, Gabriel Jesus. There was only one player like that on Mexico, Carlos Vela. In the Brazilian midfield, they had Casemiro, Paulinho, Renato Augusto. For Mexico, only Herrera. Outside backs for Brazil, Marcelo and Dani Alves. At outside back for Mexico, we had to convert a winger, the left back, Jesus Gallardo. The difference is in the players. Guys, Osorio also told a remarkable story where he supposedly gathered the Mexican players right before the match against Brazil and asked them if they were prepared. The response he says he got, nothing but silence. Herc, I don't even know where to start with Osorio, but you get the first crack of the bat at our old friend. Okay, let's break it down really quick. Juan Carlos Osorio, he said, the Brazilian players are better. Does that surprise us? No. We were there in Russia, Sebi. You and I were shoulder to shoulder, and the first thing that came out of our mouths came out of Jare Borghetti's mouth. Anybody who covers the Mexican national team is the evident lack of quality between the Mexican player and the Brazilian. That's not a shock to us. But to say that's the reason you lost, the sole reason you lost, and then to go and give this Bush League answer about how you motivated these players, and in this motivational speak you gave them, you said, I am ready for this game. I've been ready for 40 years. I've been ready for today for 40 years. It's, I don't even know where to start with that. It's unfathomable. It's Bush League by this manager. This isn't the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time. We've seen many times Juan Carlos Osorio has now shown his true colors. You and I were in that Juan Carlos Osorio, I don't want to say defendant camp, but we definitely believed in his system, in his mechanics, the way he went about his, 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 his positioning with the team. That's out the window. I mean, it's one after the other with this guy. You can't tell me that the Mexican players don't believe in themselves. If you say, you're going to go to the World Cup, you're going to have the opportunity to go to the fifth game, el quinto partido. You have the choice of playing <laughs> Argentina, you have the choice of playing Germany, or you have the choice of playing Brazil. Who do you want to play? Every player, every Mexican fan will say, Give us Brazil. Do you want to know why? Do you want to know why? History. History, yes. This team that was there in the World Cup, 15 of those players were in the 0-0 in the last World Cup in Brazil versus Brazil. Eight of these guys won an Olympic gold medal in Wembley versus Neymar and that team, that Brazilian team. Three of these guys won a U-17 title against that team. One of these guys won a Confederations Cup versus Brazil, the history behind Brazil. You take that every day, but it's the circumstances of this game. Do you remember how laughable Juan Carlos Osorio's tactics were against Sweden? Mm. They came up mm -hmm. limping, barely surviving. They thought they were eliminated from being six points and heading the group to going home. If it wasn't for South Korea saving them, they would have been on a flight home. That's how bad this was. It wasn't that they didn't have confidence in their abilities versus Brazil. It was the moment. They just came away from being battered against Sweden, and Juan Carlos Osorio was leading them. It wasn't that they didn't have confidence in themselves. They didn't have confidence in Juan Carlos Osorio. Jose, in Spanish, they would say, se lavó las manos. He washed his hands of the players. What do you think of what Osorio did? I agree. I mean, he keeps making up excuses. He doesn't take responsibility. Uh, Brazil has more talent than Mexico? Yeah. I don't need Juan Carlos Osorio to tell me that. My niece who is four years old and doesn't like soccer, she knows Brazil has more talent than Mexico. But Sebas Hercules, Germany had more talent than Mexico, and they were able to win that game. Why? So when Mexico wins, it's because Juan Carlos Osorio had the right game plan, and when they lose, it's because his players were not as talented as the Brazilians. Juan Carlos Osorio broke a code. What happened in the locker room stays in the locker room. He threw his players under the bus. And Juan Carlos Osorio, for the last three years before the World Cup, he would talk about resilience, resilience and resilience. He hired this psychologist, Emanuel Ibarrondo, to get the players ready. And 
in the World Cup, the first time they faced adversity, the players weren't ready. So Juan Carlos Osorio failed as a leader. You know, tactics are important. Uh, game plan, it's important. But the first job of a manager is convince his players that they are capable of winning any game. And Juan Carlos Osorio didn't do that. Players are human beings. They're not machines. That's your job to get them ready to play against the best teams in the, in the world. And Brazil is one of them. So Juan Carlos Osorio, Tebas Hercules, is as good as his record. He's the worst manager in Mexican history. He lost seven to nothing against Chile. In the Gold Cup, Tebas Hercules, we were there. He lost to Jamaica. He didn't lose to the U.S. He lost to Jamaica. And in the World Cup, Hercules mentioned it. He lost to Sweden 3 nothing With a tie, he would have been first in the group. And he would have played uh, Switzerland instead of Brazil. So Juan Carlos Osorio, to me, it's a huge disappointment. Herc, put yourself in the player's shoes. Either a Mexican player, and we started to hear from them. They've now started to speak out and respond. Or even a player on his current teams. How do you take this guy seriously knowing what's coming in a couple years? Well, let me start off by saying it wasn't all bad under Juan Carlos Osorio. I, I'm not going to go that route because he did a lot of good with this team. But, but in the biggest moment, it was much of the same. Nothing. No quinto partido. Eh, nothing to really hang your hat on. It wasn't this good feeling that a lot of I don't of remember another got. seven. I don't remember yeah. another seven. Hold on, let me finish. It wasn't this feeling that a lot of – a lot of press and players got like the 2014 World Cup with Miguel Herrera, where you felt good about the performance. You felt good about the way you exited this tournament. I understand he had that 7-0. I understand it was a catastrophic moment in Mexican soccer where they got embarrassed versus Chile in a big tournament. I understand that. But you look at the other things that he's done. First win in Canada in how many years? Uh, Salvador in how many years? Honduras in how many years? The first time they broke that that uh, curse, if you will, of Dos Acero versus the United States in Columbus. That was Juan Carlos Osorio as well. The biggest win in the World Cup history was versus Germany. That was Juan Carlos Osorio as well. But listen, Mexico has a lot of tradition. If you go back since the 1994 World Cup, there are only two national teams that have consistently made it from the group phase to the knockout rounds. One is Brazil. Who is the other? It is Mexico. Mexico. Okay, yeah. so they have that. But Juan Carlos Osorio doesn't have that history. Juan Carlos Osorio doesn't have that... I guess resume built up. He needed that psychological factor. And if you're a player now on his team, they'd be like, wow, I got to watch what I say. I got to watch what I do because there's clearly no statute of limitations to <laughs> how long it is until we break this. I mean, usually when you hear this news, it's decades after. Decades after something happens, a coach or a player will open up. It's not a year and a half, two years later. The wound is still very fresh. Juan Carlos Osorio should be smart enough it's too fresh to go out there and start talking this way. And by the way, in this glass house, house that he lives in, that he's built, he shouldn't be throwing these stones. Let's look at some of the other places that Osorio has now thrown his hat into the ring for. Because you know, wherever he is, he's not content. He wants to move on. We saw that with what he did with the Paraguayan national team. Just recently, uh, he did an interview. He says he wants to manage the Colombian national team. He wants to go to Europe. And he wants to come back to Brazil. Jose, is any of that realistic? Uh, he can go back to Brazil. I mean, he did a good job before uh, he was hired for the Mexican national team. He is very well regarded in Brazil. Juan Carlos Osorio is a guy who is very professional, who study a lot, but the messenger is as important as the message. And Juan Carlos Osorio, Sebas, Hercules, when you hear him talk, he uses so many complicated words. When he was introduced as the manager of Mexico, he would say, uh, to describe Mexican players, they are fibra uno a. That's crazy. <laughs> players need a simple message. Players need to be motivated. Players need to be ready to play any given game. And Juan Carlos Osorio, to me, he's not a great manager. Uh, eh, he forgot to mention one thing eh, in that game against Brazil. There was one aspect in the game where Brazil was far superior than Mexico, and that was in the manager position. Tite. It's a way better coach than Juan Carlos Osorio. So, Sebas, Juan Carlos Osorio, he can keep talking, but at the end of the day, we are going to judge him for the results he gets on the field. And so far, he hasn't done that much. Kirk, there was a time when you were fanning the flames on the Osorio to the USMNT. I don't think you want that now, yeah? 
No, no, no. In soccer, football is about moments. It's clearly not his moment. Listen, you and I were in Russia. You saw the conversations I had with Juan Carlos Osorio. He himself sought me out and told me he wanted the U.S. men's national team position. He, he seems to be doing a lot of this, a lot of selling himself to a lot of different teams and national teams. And this is where it's rubbing me the wrong way, rubbing fans the wrong way. What he did in Paraguay, uh, it, it's... It's sad. It's laughable. It's, it's a stain on his resume, if you will. You can't get a job, have a job, and then all of a sudden see a better job and say, well, you know what? I think I want this, so I'm out. And then not get it. Yeah. And now you're, what, going to talk about spilt milk? It, it's one after another with Juan Carlos Osorio. He was famous for his rotaciones of players. Now he's going to become even more famous for rotaciones when it comes to jobs. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.